Did you think earning six figures per year in tech would be easy? I did. And I ended up earning 160,000 euros per year. But man, did it take me a long time to get there. Could I have done things smarter to get there way faster? Absolutely. So to help you on your journey of becoming a six figure tech freelancer and making it 10 times easier, here are the 21 brutal truths about making a lot of money in tech that I wish I'd known sooner. Lesson number one. In your 30s, you'll see a massive divide between the people that are still pursuing their dreams and growing their professional skills and the people that gave up. The first group is still improving their skills, working on side projects and building a life they truly enjoy. The second group hit a dead end, accepted it and are just there to pay the bills and sit out until retirement. So please spend more time with people in the first group or you'll likely end up in the second group. Lesson number two, take your skills to the open market as soon as possible. And with open market, I mean the internet. Whether you're good at data, coding, or cybersecurity, you'll get paid way more for your skills if you leverage the internet to reach clients and build your portfolio than you ever would if you were to follow the traditional route of climbing the corporate ladder. Lesson number two is leverage your skills on the internet. Lesson number three, I see so many tech professionals trying to earn some extra side income by freelancing on Fiverr and Upwork. But the truth is you'll end up competing with thousands of others for very competitive rates for short-term projects. This will cost you a lot of time and energy for just a little bit of extra cash on the side. What you want is big clients, longer contracts and higher pay without the competition so you can replace and double or triple your current full-time income. And trust me, you won't find those types of clients on Fiverr. You'll find them on LinkedIn. Lesson number three, focus on LinkedIn over other platforms. Lesson number four, if I would have listened to the advice my managers used to give me, I would still be sitting behind a desk in an office right now. Technically, I'm still sitting behind a desk in an office right now, but it's my office, it's my own studio. And if I would have listened to my former colleagues, I might have ended up as a senior data analyst by now, earning more money, but having more responsibilities, more stress and less free time. But I didn't listen and now I have my own office. I can work when I want and what I want from wherever I want. And I'm earning more money right now. And that's because of lesson number four, only take advice seriously from people that are already where you want to be. Lesson number five, how much experience do you think you need to start freelancing in tech? Five, 10, what if I told you is way less than that? See, the reason clients and companies hire freelancers is because they have a problem and they need their problem solved. If you can solve their problem, they'll hire you, simple as that. You don't need to be the best in your field. You just need to be better than your client. You need to be able to solve that problem. And I believe with one or two years of work experience, you already have enough experience to solve problems. Take a look at now, an AI engineer who's worked with me and who started freelancing straight out of university. And at one time had six freelance contracts running at the same time. Now is now moving to the island of Madeira to live there as a tech freelancer slash digital nomad. So lesson number five is you need less experience than you think you need. Lesson number six, personal brands are the new resumes. Whether you like it or not, having an online presence increases your reach, builds authority and trust with your audience and potential clients. And this will attract a lot of recruiters, projects and opportunities, especially on LinkedIn. Plus, having an online presence will increase the perceived value of you, making it easier to charge more for your services. So lesson number six is personal brands are the new resumes. Whether you like it or not. Lesson number seven, have you ever noticed that most of your colleagues don't talk about ambitious goals, building a career they actually enjoy, or trying side projects and freelancing? That's because the truth is that most people don't care about your ambitious plans. They would rather talk about the weekend and the latest TV show you should watch. And that's why it's so important to find others that are on the same journey as you. So lesson number seven is to connect with like-minded people. Whether it's your colleagues or an online community or whether you reach out to tech freelancers on LinkedIn, connect and support each other. Learn from each other's mistakes, share projects, share recruiters, share clients. This simple hack will keep you motivated and speed up your progress a ton. Lesson number eight. So you might think that freelancing is risky. I mean, you're the first one to get kicked out if a company's doing bad, if we're going through an economic downturn or if your department's budgets get cut. But the truth is, if this happens, chances are that you're going to get fired either way, whether you're a freelancer or a regular employee. Freelancer or a regular employee. The only difference is that as a regular employee, you've probably worked there for years, repeated the same trick, have not really updated and improved your skills in a while. You need to update your resume. You need to update your LinkedIn profile. You need to start applying again. You need to practice interviews again. 
But as a freelance, however, you probably have multiple clients anyway. So if one of them drops, you don't lose your full income stream. As a freelancer, you're always connected with recruiters, potential clients, previous clients. As a freelancer, you're always up to date on your skills because you're hopping from various projects to other projects. So as a freelancer, it's far easier to find a new job than as a regular employee if shit hits the fan. Lesson number eight, your nine to five job is riskier than freelancing. Lesson number nine, if you've ever thought about building an app, productizing your services, or just becoming an entrepreneur slash solopreneur, then I'd highly recommend to become a freelancer first. Because as a freelancer, you'll learn about sales, you'll learn about marketing, you'll learn about promoting yourself, you'll learn about taxes, invoices, accounting, but without all the headache and stress of hiring people, managing people, investing your money up front, managing inventory, dealing with suppliers, HR, payroll, freelancing will give you the entrepreneurial mindset without the entrepreneurial headache. Lesson number nine, freelancing is entrepreneurship on easy mode. Lesson number 10, it will never be the right time. You'll never feel ready, do it anyway. So many people get stuck in analysis paralysis, trying to get every single detail right. But the truth is, you're just scared. And the fear will only go away if you act in spite of that fear. People far dumber and less skilled than you are further in the tech freelancing career and earning more money than you simply because they took the jump anyway. Lesson number 10, it will never be the right time. So do it anyway. Lesson number 11, recruiters will ghost you. Clients won't come back to you. You'll get rejected after you send your resume. You'll get rejected after having an interview. That's completely okay because that's all part of the game. What's not okay is if you don't learn from your rejection. Rejections. See, I learned from mispronouncing the word rejection. And now I'm going to pronounce it the right way. It's not okay if you don't learn from rejections. If you always get ghosted after sending a message to a recruiter, there's probably something wrong with your opening message. If they do come back to you and then ask for you to share your resume and then start ghosting you, there's probably something wrong with your resume. Maybe you haven't highlighted the right things in your resume, or maybe your resume just looks like shit. Or if you do make it to the interviews, but you constantly hear that they went for someone else, then there's probably room for improvement in your sales and communication. Whatever the rejection, it's data and an opportunity to learn from it and increase your chances of getting hired the next time. Lesson number 11, learn from your rejections. Lesson number 12. I remember the exact moment I decided I want to start freelancing so vividly. I was snowboarding in the French Alps and on the last day of our trip, my muscles were so sore from the snowboarding that I decided to take it easy that day and just chill out at the cabin. And while sitting in this cabin, I had a phone call with a good friend of mine who was always trying to convince me to start freelancing. He was already a day freelance data analyst. And he would always ask me, when are you gonna start freelancing? So I told him, well, you know, I just bought a house. Now I got a mortgage. It might be a little bit risky to jump to freelancing right now, maybe a couple of years from now. But then he told me, well, that's actually the perfect moment to start freelancing because as a freelancer, it's harder to get a mortgage and harder to buy a house. But since you already bought one as a regular employee, now's the time to start freelancing. But then I told him, well, what if I can't find a project? Well, then he told me, well, then you just stay at your current job. You don't have to take the jump to freelancing if you don't have a contract. But what if I do find a contract, but then can't find a project after that? And then he told me, well, you'll earn so much money in those couple of months that you'll have plenty of time to find another contract. And absolute worst case, you go back to regular employment. And this is where it started clicking in my head. This guy was thinking in opportunities and I was thinking in risks. I only saw what could go wrong and he only saw what could go right. This is the entrepreneurial freelance mindset that guy already had and I was still stuck in that same nine to five employment paradigm. That was the exact moment I told myself, you know what, once I get back home, I'm gonna start looking for freelance jobs. Point being, if it wasn't for him to guide me, to hold me accountable, to push me and to nudge me in the right direction, I would have never taken that jump to freelancing, or at least not in the foreseeable future. I truly view him as my mentor. So lesson number 12 is get a mentor as fast as possible. They are the only legit shortcut in life. Sometimes you'll meet them naturally in life. Sometimes you'll have to pay for them. Either way, do it. It's worth it because they will help you overcome your blind spots and 10x your growth. Lesson number 13. So when I stopped worrying about what other people would think of me and started putting myself out there more 
everything changed. I started connecting with like-minded professionals. I started getting noticed by recruiters and hiring managers and eventually landed a job this way. All because I learned the value of showing my work on LinkedIn. My lessons, my results, my mistakes, my stories, all in the form of written posts on LinkedIn. And I know it might feel cringy in the beginning if you've never written a post, but to me, it's more cringy if you miss out on life-changing opportunities through LinkedIn, all because you don't want to sit down, put your ego aside and start writing that first post on LinkedIn. So lesson number 13 is read the book, show your work to learn how and why showing your work, especially on LinkedIn, can literally change your life. Lesson number 14, let's be honest. You work 40 hours a week. You have hobbies, you have friends, you have family, you, you have to cook, you have to clean, you need some time to rest. When will you find the time to update your resume and update your LinkedIn and reply to recruiters and apply to jobs, to write posts showing your work on LinkedIn? You need to block out some time to do those things. Even if it's just a half an hour every day, before you start work or maybe in the evening, pull up your calendar right now, put in half an hour every day and just put in the work. It might mean you have to sacrifice something else, but I've never met a successful person who hasn't done that. If you're serious about this, then you need to spend time on it daily and prioritize it. Otherwise, you'll just stay exactly where you are right now. Lesson number 14, block out dedicated time. Lesson number 15. So you maybe you'll recognize this situation. Recruiter sends you a message with an opportunity that's not really interesting. Maybe because the job they offer doesn't fit your skills at all. Maybe they're offering a full-time position while you're only looking for freelancing. Whatever it is, most likely you ignore them or just send them a message that you're not interested and leave it at that. Please stop doing that because you're missing out on so many potential opportunities this way. What you need to do is start replying to every single recruiter that sends you a message, no matter how big of a mismatch it is. Reply anyway and let them know what it is you're specifically looking for. This way they will make a mental note or make an actual note in their recruitment system, CRM system, whatever it is they're using that you are open to XYZ opportunities. So next time a client comes up or an opportunity comes up, which fulfills XYZ, they will think of you and then they will send you a message. It might be a week from now, it might be a month from now. And if you don't believe me, check out what happened to Cristobal just a few weeks ago. How did you find your first freelance project? I reached out to a recruiter and the first the first message I sent to her said um, I wasn't fit for the job because it was focused on something that I, I don't have the technical capabilities. And after a week, I sent her another in in message and she just called me back right away and, so, and told me that I, the, she had a job that it was perfect for me and, and I started. It's crazy how many people don't realize this. So lesson number 15 is reply to every recruiter. Lesson 16, after having coached thousands of tech professionals on becoming high paid tech freelancers, I've realized that I can now tell within one or two calls whether they will actually become a successful freelancer or not. And it has nothing to do with their skills, their work experience, their portfolio, their resume, or even the country they're from. But it has everything to do with the amount of agency they have. And what I mean with this is the ability to just show up, engage, and not quit. Every single person that consistently showed up on the calls, engaged with the community, engaged with others, asked questions, did the assignments, and just didn't give up were the ones that landed the highest paid freelance projects within no time. The ones that started slacking off, never participated actively, never asked questions, and just gave up eventually were the ones that stayed in exactly the same position they're in right now. Lesson 16, consistency wins. Show up and do the work. Lesson 17, if you work in tech, you most likely have an analytical mindset, meaning you can look at things objectively and reason logically. And if there's one thing you should look at objectively, it's the following. You have to understand that it's all a numbers game. Keep applying, keep getting rejected, and eventually you'll land a job. That's it, that's the game, it's all numbers. So if you have a weak resume, don't have a lot of work experience, and let's say you apply to 100 jobs, you might get one or two responses here and there. If you have a lot of work experience and an impressive portfolio and apply to 100 jobs, you might get dozens of replies. But you could also just have the absolute best resume in the world and apply to a job that is the perfect match in heaven and still not get hired because someone else was just a bit quicker and got hired already. Maybe someone else was a bit cheaper than you. 
or maybe someone else just had a better personal click with the hiring manager. There's always variables outside of your control. You can never control the output. You can only control the input, the reps. The higher the reps, the higher the chances of you getting hired. It's all a numbers game. Lesson 17. Lesson number 18. So Charlie Munger once said, the first $100,000 is the hardest. And it's a principle that applies just as well to tech freelancing. Landing your first contract is often the hardest part. You don't have any previous freelance work experience yet. You're building credibility from scratch. You might even feel imposter syndrome. But once you break through and get that first client, everything changes. You gain confidence, you gain work experience. You have a portfolio, you build social proof and get some referrals. And just like compounding returns after $100,000, the momentum kicks in and the projects start coming in faster and easier. So lesson number 18 is the first project is the hardest. Lesson number 19. I've seen this happen so many times with people I've worked with. They execute on what I teach. They land the first freelance project and then they stop doing the things that gave them that first contract. So when their contract is finished, they have to start from scratch again and build up the momentum again, risking not having a contract for a couple of months. So when you land a freelance project, just go into maintenance mode, which means you'll still write posts on LinkedIn, just a bit less. You'll still reply to recruiters, just less actively. You update your LinkedIn profile with your latest freelance project, and you always keep on the open to work setting because you are always open to work. Always, you're freelancing, which means you're always open for better opportunities, for better projects. I've seen so many people turn off this setting as soon as they land their first freelance project, which means recruiters will stop reaching out to you. Don't do it. Lesson number 19, you're always open to work. Lesson number 20. All right, this is a big one and I've saved it for last for a reason. I see so many people mistakenly thinking that if they just get one or two certificates, they can find any job they want. But the truth is no recruiter or company cares anything about your stupid little certificate because most IT certification is just worthless. You might think it's proof that you're very skilled at a certain tech stack, but actually it's only proof that you've managed to pass an exam and recruiters and companies know this very well. But there are in fact a couple of certifications that are actually often a hard requirement for jobs. Recruiters will literally filter out your resume if you don't have it. So here are three of the most in-demand certifications in IT. Agile, Cloud, and Cybersecurity. And if you want to know the specific certifications I'm talking about, I made a video where I share exactly those, where to get them, how to get a discount, so you can increase your chances of getting hired and increase your hourly rate. And if you're wondering where's lesson number 21, it's to subscribe to my channel because I'll help you on your journey of becoming a six-figure tech freelancer. Cheers. And watch the next video.